light to read. And I think that's a very important thing to have when you're trying to become literate. I think at this stage, what I need to be able to share with you is the fact that we are all born illiterate. And that those of us that do become literate have had the good fortune, rather than lights or rights, or to learn to read, and then to read to learn. Um, those of us born to homes with lights with, and books and encouragement from our much literate, our literate parents. If we are not born to homes with, with books, then we would have the good fortune, hopefully, to have gone to good schools with decent teachers and, importantly, very good, good libraries. By, by the very nature of literacy, it's a learned skill. And to take that learned skill and do something with it, to, to become a power user or a social activist, or in, like in my case, a civil hacker, as I've been called, um, it becomes very important that we believe completely in what this thing is, this set of 21st century toolkits, the set of technologies, and importantly also the library, which is so much part of that particular space to be in. Uh, we need those 21st century tools and to be able to deal with the problems in development that we have here in Namibia and much further afield. Um, and I'm here today to share with you an idea with, which I'm calling at this stage, instead of Library Pi, which is a, an earlier version of what we were started a few years ago, and we're calling it Light to Read. And I'm going to explain a bit more about this technology that you see here in my hands and on the table alongside me um, shortly. There are 600 rural schools without electricity at this stage in Namibia, give or take. Importantly, there are also 240,000 households without electricity in Namibia, and 80% of those are rural. 80% of all Namibian homes also have a, at least one person with a cell phone, a mobile phone, in the home. And, and it's important to understand that, because when you then look at the issues about communication and security and light in the home, one has to consider simple things like, what does it cost? to charge a mobile phone when you don't have electricity in the home. What does it cost? In Namibian terms, it costs anywhere between five and 10 Namibian dollars to charge your phone at the local cooker shop. That's a US dollar for every charge. So when you start looking at the numbers, it becomes quite scary that those are the prices that we pay when we don't actually have electricity in the home. I've been for many, many years involved in trying to promote free and open source software, stable, robust alternatives to proprietary solutions that are affordable and that can be well supported in often very remote sites like the schools in northern Namibia and northeastern Namibia in areas where there is no electricity. And in having been involved at ICT development projects and especially in the education sector, it is very clear that these technologies need support, and they need support from everyone. And it, it's, it's something that when I started this with schools, we were worried about them not having access to technologies. I think I still am. We're still in a situation where most schools in Namibia don't have access to technologies, don't have libraries, and so on. And we've got to real, remind our decision makers that in order to embrace decent, robust, stable service solutions in education, in these adverse conditions that they face, be the infrastructure, like we've just heard about in the news, environment, health, all these sort of things that slow economy, these are the things that will slow down and make it very difficult for people to actually get what I think is unambiguous a need for free access to information using what I believe is important high-speed, broadband internet access, benchmarked. What are benchmarks and milestones? Um, they never really recognize these days. I mean, most people only see something be seen as an achievement 50 to 60 years later. For example, this is Martin Cooper. He invented the first wireless mobile phone. And in, in doing that some in 1973, he created this first handheld. It weighed a kilogram. Uh, it was 
costed in 1983 when it was launched at 4,000 US dollars, an incredibly expensive device if you think what it's like today. If you were to tell your father that you were busy with a, the development of an invention, you were busy creating a personal telephone which had touch and voice activated features like all these apps that we have today, B-Day, things like a scheduler, a calculator, a torch, which is my favorite device app on a phone, um, even banks, an ATM that you can use on a phone today, all the kind of features that we have and take for granted on our phones today, he would probably laugh and say to you, well, would you then also need a very large wheelbarrow personally to drive this thing along with the batteries and everything else that you need? And would you need a trademark lawyer? Um, but more to the point, today, smartphones, as I'm talking about now with all those features, which are mostly available for free on the internet, will cost you less than 25 US dollars before the end of this year. Tablets will cost you probably less than 50 US dollars before the end of this year. More sobering is that in Namibia today, there are only some 350 schools with real libraries. One of them, this particular school, um, in Kavango, St. Boniface College, is one of the top performing schools in Namibia. And the reason for that is that they are able to read a lot. They have a library, and they have access to that library all the time. What is a library? A library is a collection of reading materials, books for all ages, and other diverse media, which they can read, listen to, and obviously watch for pleasure and for study. Um, since the internet has been become pretty much a thing in all our communities. Libraries have stopped working where those have not actually been developed. And they've, been stopped, they've stopped working as centers for educational excellence quite a long time ago. When did libraries stop being the fundamental centers of excellence for education? When did they stop providing the encyclopedias and information that we need to study, to prepare lessons, to carry on? with an education and get through and understand the great and cool things in our world around us today. When did the subject index stop working as it should? When did Google become the search tool it is today? For virtually everyone on the internet, it was when the internet became an alternative to finding information fast and for basically at some cost. Except in Namibia, the internet. What internet do we have here in Namibia? The internet in Namibia at this stage is something that's only a promise. Joel Kapanda, our Minister of ICT, promised us an internet connection um, for schools for free on May the 15th in 2012, and we're still waiting for that. Um, free internet, what is free internet? And, and, and if we are going to look at a reasonable benchmark of internet, what is this benchmark for internet that we would actually expect at schools? If you've got 1,000 learners at school, all looking at using 64 kilobits per second, it would add up to around 100 megabits per second that would be required for a school of that size with those number of kids if they're all trying to download resources um, on the internet. And, and I think it's important to remember that if you were at this stage trying to use a 4G connection in Vintook to connect to the internet to access something like a TED video, you know how difficult it is. It's slow, it's frustrating. So can you imagine what a school with a thousand learners would be doing, trying to do when they're downloading at the same time? Telecom is retailing at this stage 10 megabits per second at around 700 US dollars per month. It is unlikely that that kind of service can be affordable in the current school setting. So obviously, these, this points out to the fact that internet, even if we wanted to get it for free at schools, would likely be an impossible dream. Internet in Africa remains the most expensive resource um, in the world, and certainly in the developing world. So d does free high-speed internet in Namibian schools become a reality for me in my lifetime? I don't think so, Syringa. I don't think it's going to be real. 
but therefore there's an idea worth sharing with an affordable, local, off-the-shelf set of commodities like USB memory sticks, like little routers and solar light kits like I've got here. I maintain that we can use that kind of device to provide us with an offline device loaded with free and open educational resources, which are available without any need of the internet at this stage. We can get things like Khan Academy, the, the Broja Gutenberg, FET, Wikipedia, Open Library, all the kinds of resources that huge, uh, represent a huge open educational resource out there on the internet for free. We, we've got access to, at this stage in Namibia, to curriculum-based local content for grade 8 through 12 schools. We've got that for free on the internet, if you can download it. There's at the same time 3.4 million e-books, mostly for free, out there for us to access, if we had access to the internet. So, given this wealth of open and educational resources that are out there on the internet, Shouldn't that then be a very pressing issue for our Ministry of Education and other people involved in educational development to drive for those resources to be made available in some sort of well-resourced library setting at schools in Namibia, regardless of whether there was no electricity or internet at this stage? I think we can work towards making school libraries a commodity if our development bureaucracies, those associated with pushing change and transformation in education, can't do it themselves because of the nature of this bureaucracy, the behemoth that is development. Um, we can look and work towards some sort of commodity that we can put into the homes of each and every um, Namibian. A solar-powered library on a wireless network, that's all it is. It's a very simple thing. All you need is a wireless device like your tablet or your smartphone to access the free and open educational resources I've mentioned. A library of things. In fact, at this stage, you could try it out. If you have access to a phone or a tablet here in the audience, this particular device, My Light to Learn, is functional. It can be used to download resources as we speak. Um, so it's a little bit more than just an idea. So here's the thing. Light to Read is made up of a whole bunch of ubiquitous items off the shelf that you can buy in Namibia. Some prices will be higher, some will be low, but the point is, is that this particular set of devices that mix up together will provide you with this free library resource that you would otherwise not have access to um, for whatever reasons. It's mostly plug-and-play technology. It's stuff that you can buy at the local retailer. Some of it will be better, some of it will be cheaper at some stage or another, but the important thing is that all of these resources can be bought here, virtually anywhere else, for a much smaller price than it would cost for a development initiative at the sort of scale that we're looking at when World Bank gets involved. Um, this little black gizmo here, this gizmo, is a 32 gig memory stick. It's got a whole bunch of fantastic open educational content on. It hasn't quite filled the 32 gig capacity of this little gizmo, but it allows you to put on content that is shareable because it's free. This particular solution, as we've got it right now, has something called Rachel on it, and Rachel is a collection of open educational resources, like uh, some of the ones I mentioned earlier, Wikipedia and so on. The white thingamabob below it is what is called a wireless router. It's battery charged, it draws five volts, just like a cell phone, like a tablet, and it, can, it is used to transport the data that's sitting on the memory stick to you out there with your device. So this little device with that little device together represent the strength, the actual open library that we're talking about when you look at it from your devices. The blue box is filled with a battery which is charged by the solar panel, and obviously this device can also charge any devices along with this wireless router and the content on it, and it can also obviously serve lights, as I showed earlier. Together, this solution shouldn't cost you more than the price of four or five reasonable or perhaps even bad university textbooks. So it's cheap, it's affordable, and I think 
that's where we need to think about getting things to commoditize. It's got to become ubiquitous and affordable so that you can bring it into the classroom for a fraction of the price that you would otherwise be paying for conventional computer technologies. A young learner in Avumberland that I bumped into a while ago at a school without electricity, internet, or library um, remarked to me that she believed that light to read will give us this, this right to lead. And with, with the understanding that we can all make mistakes with these R's and L's in Namibia, I think it's important to realize that that was a very strong message that she came across. And I think it's an important message in the context of where I'm standing here in front of you today, that I believe that, if, that this is the way going forward. Commoditize, make it affordable, and get it out into the households. Let's not waste our time waiting for technology to be brought into play by our larger ministries. Do we really want an illiterate crowd in an old, archaic education system? Or do we want a flipped classroom? A place where these ubiquitous and affordable technologies are made available at any time, anywhere, at home and wherever else. I think Light to Read can be part of that solution. I think, I think it's an important part of our going forward with education. It doesn't need to be there permanently. I think it's a stepping stone at some stage to the effective use of what is currently a poorly used part of the world called the Internet. When that too becomes ubiquitous in Namibia, and free at schools in Namibia. I thank you.